Bobby Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today you're going to get a fun two part conversation with Megan and Parnell. They are residential and commercial brokers out in Colorado. And we've got some really fun little conversation for you. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Make sure you stick around for the information at the end. And I'll see you on the other side. You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. If you've never heard of Follow Up Boss, you're going to love it. It's going to get you organized in a way that will actually impact your business for profitability and for better excellence with those you're serving. For more information, go to followupboss.com slash crazy. Hey, real estate agents, do you struggle to make videos for your YouTube channel that actually make your phone ring? Do you have a YouTube channel, but the videos don't get any views and you're really not getting phone calls from the people who are dying to hire you? Well, guess what? My good friend, Karen Carr, teaches real estate agents how to make YouTube videos that actually turn into an evergreen sales funnel. You'll spend a couple of hours making a very simple video without a lot of bells and whistles and frankly, not much production value. And people are going to call you when they're ready to buy or sell a house in your market, not just right now, but for weeks and months and years to come. Yay, evergreen content. Now she's doing a free five-day challenge starting on Halloween. October 31st. So I highly recommend this. I mean, it's a free challenge. You can do it if you just will. You will learn how to set up your channel to grab viewers by the eyeballs, how to research what exactly they'd like to watch and what your YouTube channel needs to have highly converting videos. Best part of all this, it's a free challenge and you don't have to spend a lot of money on ads. So enroll today at youtubeforagents.com slash Lee. I can't wait to see what you come up with. So welcome to the podcast and thank you for coming on to hang out with me for a little bit. Thank you for having us. So tell our audience where you're located, who you are, how long you've been in real estate, give them a little bit of background so they know who they're listening to today. Yeah. So we live up in Winter Park, Colorado. It's a small ski town about an hour out of Denver, hour and a half out of Denver. Is that near Estes Park? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. We're in between Estes Park and Denver. Yeah. But you're not in the shining though, because Estes Park is in the shining. Correct. We're We're not not in the shining. We're not in the shining. (laughs) Good reference. So I've been doing real estate with the family. I'm a third generation real estate agent. So I've been doing it since I was a kid. We have one of our stories that we'll tell you about that. And then I got licensed in 1994. Megan? I have been licensed since 2008. Started working with these guys in 06. And yeah, so we're pumped to be on this because that crazy shit in real estate is pretty much our lives. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah, because you came into the market right about the time the market changed. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Started from the bottom, you know, and then so learned a lot. And I'm currently the designated managing broker for the state of Colorado and Nebraska. So for EXP commercial. And for then commercial. I run our residential team. Oh, nice. All right. So the commercial side probably still has less drama than the residential side. Yeah. Yeah. The the commercial side is not as fun. There's no emotions. It's just numbers. Yeah, but it's less drama. So I think some days I would probably say that's a win. <laughs> yes, it's a win. <laughs> there are so many days when we're working on a deal and I look at him and I'm like, maybe I'll make the switch to commercial because this is a lot to handle. You're over there looking at a spreadsheet and I'm talking about whose kid is going to get which bedroom. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Then we're not so talk to me a little bit about what's been going on in your markets. Are you seeing any shifting and changing going on right now? A little bit of heartburn as we transition? Yeah, we're still seeing you know, more properties are coming on the market. At one point, we were down to 17 houses yes. on the market for the county. So that was a little scary time. But uh, we're still having, if it's the right property and you price it right, we're still having multiple offer situations. If you overprice it, I mean, by like a dollar or two, it sits on the market for six months. So, yeah. you know, it's a cash, be cautious about how you price for sure. Right. And then uh, anything that needs a little bit of work you know, it's hard to find people to do those, anything to fix up a place. So anything that needs work. Anything. Yeah, anything. anything. So on the commercial side, you know, you're in Colorado. Do you do weed dispensaries and marijuana (laughs) farms and grow houses? I don't, it's not legal here. All we have is CBD. Yeah. But you've got the whole kit and caboodle. So what does that do to your commercial market? Has that stabilized it? Like, 
with it, COVID, we saw a lot of pressures on office space, but I'm just going to wager that the marijuana side of the business didn't have the same pressures. Yeah, actually, it went up. The side of the marijuana business went up. So there was more dispensaries that were made because you can run the whole farm with two people. You can run a dispensary with two people. So the dispensaries, at least in Colorado, they were considered a necessity, just like liquor stores. You got to keep people calm. You don't want them getting excited. I know, but in so many states, like realtors weren't essential. You could buy weed, but you can't sell a house. I mean, the the uneven application was wild, but we won't go down that rabbit hole. I was going to say, that's a whole nother conversation. I get really mad, but anyway, I won't get mad right now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So yeah, so the weed thing's a big deal. Farm's a big deal. Farming's a big deal. A lot of people are giving up the marijuana farms because there's too many of them. So a lot of them are going to the... The cannabis side, more cannabis, and what, what's the other thing called? Hemp. Hemp. They're doing the hemp. So now they're making shirts, boxes, probably make cars out of it soon. So that they've figured out how to make hemp. And it's with the binding materials they use, it lasts a long time. But when you don't want to dissolve it, you can dissolve it and it goes back into natural products. Well, so George Washington grew hemp. So it basically yeah. is the most American of American products. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good point. So it's it's um, that's the big industry that's kind of coming around Colorado. Right now, there's probably too many dispensaries at this point. So some of them are going to start going out of business. On the other side of commercial business, everybody's afraid to start a new business because there could be another shutdown, you know. No, like, no, no. Dr. Fauci said he never did a lockdown. Didn't you see his interview? He's so <laughs> yes, <interesting>. Right. <laughs> right. And it's like monkeypox. You know, they're trying to talk about this monkeypox. Five people have been sick. They're all based in one sector of the community. So it's it's very isolated. But, you know, interesting how they're trying to keep us in fear, right? That's I think that's what they're trying to do is keep people in fear. They already um, made a lot of money off the pandemic when all of us had a really rough time figuring out how to navigate it. Yes. Um, yeah. And then the, the commercial space for office space is way down because nobody needs to go back to the office because everybody's learned how to work from home. Some companies have found out the production went down, but other companies are productions way up because people are willing to work get their work done, even though it might take more hours, but they're at home. So they take a break and then they come back and work. So they're working from seven in the morning until midnight, just get their yeah, work I don't done. wonder when the public's going to figure out that work from home sounds like a good idea, but you're working 12 and 14 hours because you're addicted. You see the blue screen and you walk by yeah. right. emails, do a few things and then walk away. And like people are never turning it off. And I'm yeah. not saying that, you know, you shouldn't be productive, but there's a limit to what you should be doing in the in the day. So I guess that'll probably another year or two as people figure out that the burnout is going to start to pick up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That pendulum will swing back. I think it's already started to a bit. There's a lot of people I know that are like looking forward to getting back into an office and really separating that personal life from their right. world. Yeah. You to have yeah. Some, some other adults with for interaction that you're not legally required to be with, like your spouse and kids. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> you know, and being in the business so long, we we joke about it. But so when everybody, and we'll talk about Megan's first deal because that's how she was introduced to real estate. But <laughs> when some a lawyer comes up and says, "Hey, we're suing you," and they hand me the papers, everybody in the office freaks out and they wonder why I walk away so calm. I'm like, it's just news. Somebody just gave me a new newspaper. I just need to read it, see what's going on, figure out where we are. So. That's Megan's introduction to real estate. If you want to hear her story, Parnell's been conditioned though from how he grew up as well. But yes, my first introduction to real estate, the first deal I ever did, I got sued. So the very and it was, first one, yeah, and it was silly. I know, right? Welcome to the club. And Parnell was so calm about it, which was awesome to have that mentorship and guidance. But yeah, it was like a little lot deal. I had been talking to the buyer, like we had the listing. So we worked out this deal, you know, got everything done. And then like a week before we were about to close, the buyer had said to me, um, because he actually did write up, he wrote up the offer himself. Like he pulled a form from the state website. Even better. (laughs) He put a brokerage's logo on it. And it didn't have the broker's name or anything. So it looked weird when we got it. And we were kind of on heightened alert. So then we get to closing and I'm talking, I had never talked to the other agent about it. She never reached out to me, anything like that. And we get to closing and he wanted a commission. And I was like, no, that's not how it works. I'm like, you don't get a commission. Because he was looking at his settlement statement and saying like, where's my you know, where's that, that 3% or maybe it wasn't. Well, hang on, yeah. this is the buyer was this the commission but it doesn't have a license or anything. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's just confirming here. All yes. right. Yes. 
So we explained this to him and talked to him about it. And then he tried to drag this other agent into it. So we had the conversation, you know, Parnell called that agent's managing broker and explained the situation. And that managing broker goes, I don't want to touch this. I don't want to be anywhere near this. She's <laughs> like, we're, we're not involved. So do what you guys need to do. We're not asking for anything. See ya. Like, she's like, we're good. Good luck. And so we're on the phone with the attorney of the buyer on the day of closing and he's yelling at us and he's telling us we're idiots and all of this and stuff lawyer. and his lawyer and Parnell goes to him, you know, Hey, to this attorney, he's like, I want you to read this line of the contract out loud. And so he goes down there and he says, and it says, this is not part of the contract, you know, cause this under is the, this, this is the, is the end, end of the, end of the contract. contract because underneath that is where it talks about commissions. Mm -hmm. And so the guy just stopped abruptly and he's like, shit. He's like, okay. He's like, let me call my client. And he got the buyer to go to closing. They closed. It was fine. We didn't have to pay out anything to this guy, but it was like 11th hour. It was so intense. And I'm like, this is what I'm doing now. Have you ever driven by a house that you sold and somebody else's sign is in the yard? It's about the most painful experience any realtor will ever have. And then comes that moment of, oh, snap, it's on me. I didn't stay in great touch. And I can tell you after 22 years in the business, I still go through that, but I've reduced the opportunities for failure because I have learned to do better with follow-up. And honestly, when you follow up better with the people you've served in the past, it's going to make you a better realtor in the future too. And that's what this program will get you. If you've never heard of follow-up boss, you're going to love it. The best top producers in this business, they're already using follow-up boss. So if you wondered why that person gets more business than you, it might be the program. There's like 250 integrations. So whatever you're using now probably could plug in with follow-up boss, keep everything in one place. You can decide how many and how often to follow up. It's all on you, but the system will be there. You do get a 30-day free trial for hanging out over here on crazy shit. Go to followupboss.com slash crazy. How much was that lot, Megan? How much was that lot? 60,000. Of course. See? I know. Yeah. It's that's the shit. It's like it, it's like a thirty thousand dollar lot, sixty thousand dollar lot, whatever. And then you get these more affluent buyers and you're, you know, selling million dollar properties and it's like and they're None. fairly chill. So you look at HGTV. <laughs> now you know why they only focus on the million dollar agent in the Beverly Hills because you don't have nearly the level of what just happened that you have yes. with an inexpensive lot. And your heart rate must have been through the roof when the whole thing was going down. Yeah. I just looked at, I was like researching, okay, what's the process? Like, okay, I get sued and we have to do all of this. But like I said, Parnell's been in the industry for so long. He has dealt with so many different situations and he was just really calm and he knew we did everything right. You know, it was all good. And, and he was a really great partner to have in that situation because I was like, God, what the offer to purchase said, I mean, a lot of agents rolling around out there would never have noticed that little line that says, Right. Yeah. <laughs> because they never read the whole contract. Right. And yeah. so then one of our more recent deals we did, that was a commercial deal. We had a contract come in. We had a, an RV park, a very special RV park back at the back, back of a reservoir with a river running through Why it. Why was it special? Because it's you'll never be able to do it again in Colorado. Oh, you'll I thought you could hit like as a nudist colony or something special. Yeah. But it's just no, a, no. It, it I mean, could have been. turn into that if you it want. Was, it was yeah. definitely a hippie place for a while there. <laughs> But so we got this offer and it was a $5 million property. And we got this offer and the lady put in the legal description, but she didn't read the full legal description. So she left an acre out of the property in the middle. So she would have bought everything but the acre in the middle that was next to the river. That was on the river. Right? The seller looked at that offer because we told him about it. And he's like, shit, I get to keep this. And we did. I was like, according to this, like we can make it work if that you way. You want to be that guy, then yeah, you could exactly. keep that <laughs> And and he would be that guy. He would yeah. have been that, the deal didn't oh. happen, but he would have been that guy. That oh, he guy. totally oh, I'll would keep have keep that acre. <laughs> Look, that means that one acre was about to be worth five million dollars on its own, and she has right. to go back and re-grab it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. Well, how did she then, get that left out of the parcel description? Was her agent screwing up or was it it was the agent, agent that wrote the offer? Yeah, they yeah. she just missed it. So I don't know. It was like, you know, you've probably seen it's kind of shocking the offers you get and people that you know, this is their full-time gig. And you're like, really? 
it, so it was one of those situations. It was an agent who had been licensed for a very long time. And when we got the offer, I looked at Parnell. I said, I can't even counter this. This is such a mess. I was like, I've, and I've done that before. And I don't want to, I don't mean to be like, whatever about it, but I was just like, it's, it's better if I just rewrite the offer. No, but the rough part is that's the agent who would call you and say, I've been doing this for 45 yes. years and let yes. me tell you. And you're like, exactly. ma'am, ma'am, you left blanks on it, ma'am, ma'am, please fill it out right. Not, <laughs> right. not right. yelling at you, but right. like, it's weird. But we you know we talk in real estate all the time about realtors don't read and it's humorous when we think about the volume of emails that we get and number of solicitations that you get from lenders and from banks and inspectors and warranty companies and the whole bit. But it really shouldn't apply when we're doing the paperwork for right, somebody right. to buy and sell real estate. And so I would just say to any realtor out there, just slow down. Right. right. Honestly, Read. most of the mistakes come in when we speed it up. Read the contract, understand the contract. Like yeah. it's that's your biggest. The, one of the, it's the major component of what you do. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, my, my favorite offer that ever came in was on 2011 paperwork, came in last year. And I was like, that's, that's, that's a really old paperwork. Please, <laughs> please use the updated version. <laughs> 10 years later, you're like, you can still get it right. for free from the state website if you want. You don't have to pay for the you're software. Still remember, hey, we have state forms. Yay. Yay. Yeah. So- <laughs> So what's crazy is I've been in real estate knowing about real estate, right? Obviously, I couldn't sell it when I was a kid. But the first contract I saw was one page long. Oh, right. It was one legal size page. If anybody knows what a legal size page is. And it was triplicate, wasn't it? Yeah. One for the office, one for you, one for the client. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And now what are they? 17 to 25 pages, depending on what state you're in? 30. Well, in in California, it's probably got 300 pages. But every time somebody sues, here comes another clause in the contract. Right, right. You can't make people behave. I mean, if we're honest about it, the one page or somebody's either going to be good or they're going to misbehave. And it doesn't matter if it's one page or 450. Exactly. Yeah, you're 100% right. Every time somebody rich dies in the house, right? Not get on sad subject, but if a rich person dies in the house, that's why everybody has to have smoke detectors and carbon monoxide monoxide detectors in their houses now because some rich family died one day. And now that's a law that's in the paperwork, right? Oh, it sometimes also happens when a legislator has a smoke detector company and then they update the regulations for it yes i'm not saying that's ever happened in my state i'm sure it's happened in other states but yeah it sounds like you love government (laughs) i mean i am i think that the government needs a a thorough cleansing yes Yes, Yes. absolutely bureaucrats too not just the elected people but the bureaucrats because i'm kind of over it right now but yes no we need smart regulations we need security we need military but we don't need to have their hands in our pockets with 87,000 new IRS agents. I'll just lay that right. out. Well, yeah. you know, speaking of that, just since you brought it up, I, I looked at the job description and by my understanding, the only people that would take that job will be my age, 50 plus, know how to use a weapon and are willing to work 14 to 20 hours a day and, and holidays. So I'm not thinking there's a lot of people applying for that job right now, right? <laughs> and if they are, they're all Republicans. <laughs> Frankly, the physically fit part is what's going to rule out a lot of the public because if we know <laughs> about the COVID era, that foreign 20 is a real thing. So. <laughs> yes, right, right. Yeah. Well, no, wait, it wasn't real. Fauci said that wasn't real either. We didn't have well, the quarantine. I forgot about that. That's that, right. Because we, that's we didn't the- need a mask and we needed four of them. And it's very confusing. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at least I know now who's good at critical thinking and, and who blindly follows along. Right, right. Exactly. And then so staying on real estate topics for everybody, my introduction to real estate was with my dad. He wanted to show me how to teach me how to do a showing on a house. So we go into this house. It's a practice showing, right? He doesn't have any clients. And how old were you at the time? I think I was 17 or 18, maybe okay. 19. Because we were going to be his showing agents, right? Drive people to the house, show them the house. Man, he was early at changing his business model. Go dad. Yes, go yeah. dad. So we go into this house and you can hear water running. And he just goes to the bathroom, opens the door, reaches in the shower and turns off the water. And then you hear this lady scream, right? It's like, holy shit, dad, the lady's home. You said nobody was here. <laughs> so that was my introduction on how to show a house. So I know if the water's running. Close Wait, but you're like 19. There's a lady screaming in the shower. Were you really that upset? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't upset, but I was embarrassed for my dad, really. Is what okay, happened. <laughs> embarrassed, yeah. But... 
Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. don't be don't be atting me in the comments, people. You got to laugh a little bit once in a while for heaven's yes. sake. Right. Well, this is the crazy <laughs> shit that happens in real estate, right? We're trying to tell you the fun side of real estate. It's not- <laughs> Honestly, we have to laugh a lot. This is a fun business, and you never know what's going to happen. And frankly, the luckiest thing for you, Megan, is that your first deal was oh, a, yeah. an unexpected shit show, so that you could say, "All right, well, it's got to be easy after that." Right. Honestly, yeah, nothing that prepared me. It was so epic because nothing shocks me anymore. We have new agents that come on board and they're all freaked out and they're like, Have you ever dealt with this? And I'm like, Don't worry. You're like, fine. Absolutely not. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we got this. Yeah, we had, uh, I think the whole team was in the office and we had the police come in one day and they were serving me papers for something, you know? And, they're, <laughs> and I'm having a conversation with the cop. He's like, The guys are like, Why aren't you freaking out? And the cop goes, I've known Pernell for 10 years. We've worked together. We're friends. He knows I'm just handing him paper. There's no reason to get upset, right? <laughs> he sold me my house. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Well, my dad once said that if you have nobody complaining about you, you're not doing enough deals. And right. that's what he told me. Yeah, he's, he's like, like you're the business. business. <laughs> he's like, if you're not getting sued in real estate, you're not doing it right. <laughs> you're not doing enough. Or you're not, not doing enough. Do it. Yeah, it's not yeah. that we're doing it wrong. It's that the, the rules change, consumer expectations yes. change. You can't control the other side. That's half of it a lot yeah. of the times. And none of us have control over the other side of a transaction or the other agent. But we do the best we can to be calm and bring them along and keep everything together. So if somebody's looking for an amazing residential or commercial broker who stays calm and team that knows how to keep things happen out in the Midwest. How can they find you guys? Yeah, that's awesome. So we're the Simple Life Colorado. We cover all over Colorado. So we're not just, we're in the mountains, but we're also in Denver and the Front Range area. So you can find us on Instagram at the Simple Life Colorado, or you can always call our office. It's 970-726-2000. And we'll be happy to chat with you and see how we can help you out. Yeah, Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on the show, guys. Yeah. And thanks for giving us a lot of different things to chat about and <laughs> be interested in. And friends, if you have questions about Colorado, now you know who to reach out to. And if you're in Colorado, I think you should go make friends. So thanks for coming on the show. And I look forward to seeing you guys in person. Thanks, thanks for yes. having us. Okay. Now, don't forget to go try follow-up boss so that your business can continue to expand in professionalism. And then you can meet some more crazy people yourself. I really appreciate follow-up boss sponsoring this episode, but mainly I appreciate them for giving y'all double the free trial time with no credit card required. So make sure you go to followupboss.com slash crazy, and then let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you're a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one of the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally want to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 